Hi community! In this video, I will walk you through customizing facial expressions for your metahuman. This is an essential topic because facial expressions significantly impact the final look of your character. It is something you can't just fine-tune with the default tools like Mesh to Metahuman and Metahuman Creator. But before we dive into the customization process, let me give you a quick overview of how metahuman animations work. Metahuman animation combines skeletal animation, morph targets, known as shape case in Blender, and dynamic materials, which blend normal maps and diffuse textures. And while dynamic materials are a separate topic, skeletal animations and morph targets share a common purpose they both deform the mesh. I don't want to go into the pros and cons of these deformation methods. What's important to know is that metahumans use both to achieve cinematic quality realism at the best level of detail. Higher loads and optimized metahumans typically rely only on skeletal animations without morph targets correction. In a sense, Skeletal animation does most of the heavy work in deforming the mesh, while morph targets smooth out imperfections for the best possible quality. Now, let's see how bones and morph targets connect to the yellow control circles on the control board. Let me demonstrate this with an example. The control, the yellow circle named Control R Mouth Sack Below. In DNA calibration terminology, this is called a GUI control. When we move this control, it's linked to two row controls Mouth Cheek Blow R, active when moved to the left, and Mouth Cheek Suck R, active when moved to the right. A single GUI control can connect to multiple row controls, not just two, it can be one or several. Each row control is tied to a specific facial expression, which corresponds to a pose for a facial skeleton and optionally some corrective morph targets. And importantly, only specific groups of bones related to the active deformation area are involved. This is crucial to remember when editing facial expressions, you can only modify bones that were initially assigned to that expression. Facial expression would work perfectly if they were always applied individually. However, they often blend together and to handle this blending, we use something called pose space deformations. Here's how it works. Moving a slider to the left activates one row control, mouth cheek blow R. Moving a symmetrical slider to the right individually activates another, mouth cheek blow L. But when both sliders are active, a third control is triggered to create a more natural combination of expressions. In MetaReforge, PSDs are named systematically. The name starts with the identifier PSD, followed by the common part of the linked row controls, and in square brackets, it lists the unique parts of each linked control. For example, this PSD represents the blending of the left and right mouth cheek blow expression. The same here, it combines the outer left and inner left brow rise expressions. To summarize, GUI controls link to raw controls which define facial expressions. PSDs further refine the blending of these expressions acting like raw controls but depending on the interaction of multiple inputs. Let's dive into navigating and editing facial expressions. To begin, ensure that runtime is initialized by clicking init rig logic. 
This step is required after every Blender restart, since the runtime only persists during an active session. Switch to Pose mode to the Edit Control Board. Here you will find a list of active expressions. If you want to adjust display settings, you can expand this area. To see all expressions, disable hide empty. This reveals all expressions. They are sortable by various parameters and searchable by name. The freeze feature is helpful for focusing on specific problem areas. It locks the list so new expressions don't appear and zeroed out expressions remain visible. Each expression has two buttons, S or solo, it highlights the selected expression and M or mute deactivates it. These tools are handy for identifying which expressions needs editing. You can also reset the control board entirely using the reset control board button. Let's go over the tools available for editing expressions each has its own purpose and together they give you a full control over customizing your character. The first tool for modifying expression is Overdrive. This allows you to amplify or reduce the overall intensity of an expression. To use it, select an expression from the list and click Tune Overdrive. You will see the main intensity slider. Zero Overdrive means no changes, Positive values amplify the expression, while negative values reduce its intensity. By adjusting the location influence and rotation influence sliders from 0 to 1, you can control which components of the expression's transformation, position or rotation are amplified or softened. And once you're happy with the adjustments, press Enter to save them, or if you change your mind, press backspace to discard the changes. In general, if the scale of the phase has increased, you can safely amplify the expression slightly using the location component. For example, on the left side of the phase, I might amplify both location and rotation components, while on the right side, I might only adjust the location component. I like how it looks with location only, but different expressions respond differently to these adjustments. For instance, for the cheek blow expression, I like to amplify both location and rotation components. If you have made changes to an expression and want to revert it, to its original state, you will use the Reset Expression tool. Simply click the Reset Expression button and the expression will return to its default configuration. Sometimes overdrive isn't enough and you want to manually adjust the expression. For this, you can use the Modify Expression Pose tool. When you activate this mode, Blender automatically hides all unrelated bones, leaving only the bones tied to the expression you are editing. You can move and rotate the visible bones as needed. I recommend switching to local transform orientations for better control. For example, to fine-tune the closing of an eyelid, you will primarily need to adjust two bones, upper eyelid A and upper eyelid B. Start by adjusting the rotation around the x-axis, then fine-tune the z-axis. And if necessary, move the bone slightly along z-axis for better fit. To refine the result further, you can also tweak other related bones as needed. And once you're ready, press Enter to save your changes. Next is Symmetrize. And many expressions have counterparts on the opposite side of the face. The Symmetrize tool copies an expression from its symmetrical counterpart to the current expression. 
while copy to symmetrical does the reverse, transferring the current expression to the opposite side. For example, if I blink R is active, clicking symmetrize will transfer changes from its symmetrical counterpart from the left side to the current expression to the right side. If you select I blink L and click copy to symmetrical, the changes will appear to the right side. So these are not separate tools, but two different ways to access the same feature. There is also an option called div that determines what get symmetrized. When div is enabled, only changes you have made to the expression are transferred. If div is turned off, the entire expression is mirrored. Personally, I prefer to work with div enabled for a more realistic result, because perfectly symmetrical expressions can feel a bit unnatural. Finally, we have ability to edit corrective shape case, also known as morph targets in Unreal Engine. This feature is available only if you didn't disable the keep shape case for edit objects option during initialization. At the bottom of the interface, you'll see a list of connected morph targets. Choose one and you can enter sculpt mode or edit mode to adjust it. Blender will automatically prepare everything for you to edit the selected shape key. Once you're done, click the check mark icon to confirm your changes and ensure they are set to be processed and transferred to the final result. If the controller is linked to multiple meshes such as the head and cartilage, you'll have the option to edit shape case for each of these objects individually. There is also a button here to navigate to the associated GUI controller if it's a raw expression or to multiple linked controllers if it's a PSD expression. And that's it for today. You now have the tools to create truly unique characters while keeping them fully compatible with MetaHuman performance capture. If you have any questions or want me to cover other topics in future videos, leave a comment and join our Discord community. Thank you for watching. See you next time.